Aloha, everyone. Joshua Hayes at BigWaveTrading.com. And wow, since the weekend video lesson that I just made three days ago, the market has completely unwound and on huge volume. If you guys watching this video lesson do not understand why I always bitch about V-shaped rallies on low volume following heavier volume sell-offs, you are witnessing why I always bitch about V-shaped rallies on below average volume. This is what could happen. Now, I want to make it very clear. Could any of us really have seen this kind of decline coming three days ago? No. I told you all in that video lesson, I expected a 5% decline, but this has turned into something much more severe and worse. I'm now expecting easily the SPY to test the 200-day moving average. This is what the Russell 2000 IWM looks like. We sliced below the 200 yesterday, no bounce today. So the next logical area of support for me, all the way down here to that 145 area, we have a long way to go. The Dow Jones Industrial Average did the same thing. Slice the 200, no bounce, huge volume on the selling. In fact, look at this three-day volume. It's the heaviest since that last sell-off we got at the end of 2018. So all this tells me that we have much more to go. And on the DIA, I would say we can start looking for support around the 255 to 260 level. But overall, this is ugly, guys. Not only is it ugly, the velocity, the sell-off, the red bop in all the charts, this screams, do not step in front of this. Now, fortunately for me, I have been telling you guys about this monthly time segment volume line since the, during the entire rally of 2019. If you're familiar with my video lessons, you know I have bitched about this rally the entire way because for the first time ever, a significant strong uptrend in the SPY was not confirmed by time segment volume. Well, at the close of this month, this line is just going to keep getting worse. It no longer can. And I mean, look at what the 2009 to this rally. Do you see how we're above the line? 2016, 2008. Do you see how we're above the signal line? And I mean, let's even go back to 2003, 2004, and 2005. Notice how we're above the line, and I know it's really hard to see on this chart. Let's see if I can't go back further. I want to show you even like back during good times. From 1995 all the way to 1999, we're above this line. In 1998, we finally cross below it, get back above it. But once we start trending lower, we hold that trend lower. Like I said, it's very rare to see this market rally like it has in the SPY with the time segment volume being negative for so long. The only index that made sense during this entire uptrend was the IWM. You can see its negative cross happened all the way back in early summer of 2018. So this is the only index basically being negative during the entire time the monthly TSV has been negative that has acted properly while the SPY has rallied. During this entire rally, I never once increased the size into a single new long position that was 5%, 10%, 15 or 20% of my account capital, which I normally do when the TSV on a monthly time frame is bullish. In a non-hot chart, I routinely get up to 5%, 10% with a beautiful, hot, well-formed chart with ad signals. I get up to 10, 20% per long position. Not one single long position the entire uptrend produced anything more than a 3 or 4% size per signal. Very few beautiful chart patterns materialized, period, during the uptrend. Less than half worked. And the one that worked the best for me, ARWR, back here, whenever it ripped and triggered through my good to cancel sell stop limit orders, didn't fill. And, of course, that was the best performing one at one point going up in a very short amount of time, 36%, and then all the way up here in that short, in a longer period of time, 200 plus percent the entire time without me. So that's just the way it is in a market like this. 
This is why it continues to be a day trade or die. I'll remind everybody in the chat room on Friday, Toka was my, or excuse me, Thursday. Nope, Friday. Toka was my top one. On Monday, COCP. Yesterday, Specs. And today, there were two. CODX, TNXP. TNXP did great. 20% plus move since the alert in the chat room. CODX, $5 to $10, almost 11 intraday, which, continue, which is why I continue to say day trade or trade small. And also, the good news is using my methodology, it protects you from getting long losing positions. So what triggered and filled on my end during the session on Wednesday? The first one was AX and X. As soon as AX and X triggered, I told everybody what I'm going to start doing now is whatever the low a day is today, the day of a signal trigger, that's now my first stop. That stop was never hit as the day went along. AX and X finished up 1.7%, but I now have one, two, three stops on AX and X, 33.33% at each level on AX and X. This is my final stop. After AX and X filled, that was around 1037. Nothing triggered for about six hours. And then all of a sudden, after six hours, within a span of like 35 minutes, four names triggered. The first one, CPHI. Yeah, it worked by the close. First profit target is this high a day. Next 50% profit target is this high a day. If this 50% is hit, the next 50% obviously is right there. And then the next 50% is right there. But on this stock, first stop loss level, 25%. Second, 25%, third, 25%, and my final stop, 25%. One quarter, my position size at each level on CPHI. I've always told everybody, if your risk tolerance is different, there's your uptrend line. A close below the uptrend line, you can get completely out. After CPHI filled, I was upset that LLIT filled. This was the signal date right here on LLIT. 86610 was my trigger. Gap down this day, I was hoping it was going to consolidate further because it didn't fail the original signal before triggering, but unbelievably, it triggered today. But thankfully, I immediately put a 50% profit target, sold everybody in the chat room, at $1, LLIT, hit that $1. My next profit target was 137 but after today's session, the next profit target is now 115 on the 50% that remains, the next profit target is one, it's because it's the heavier volume day, 157. So 115 currently where 50% is, 157 is the next. I only have two stop levels to work with. Today's low a day, where 50% of my stops are, and then this level right here, which is splitting hairs between each of them. But that's the way that I've structured it heading into Thursday session. Then there's IBIO, that one triggered on me, and I was, uh, once again, a little upset that happened, but immediately, first profit target, 39 cents. Don't care, just get me out if it moves higher. Next 50% profit target, 52 cents. First stop, actually, I like I told you I was gonna do, 33.3%, splitting hairs with this 33.3%, and my final stop is right here at 33.3%. And then unbelievably, one more long trigger, BIMI. And BIMI so far looks good. And as you can see, all of the longs that triggered today, they all finished higher. So I'm green on all of them besides the LLIT pullback, IBIO. And BIMI is basically flat. It did trigger me at 411, and unbelievably, of course, that would be the high of the day. But overall, the pattern is fine. That being said, one stop, two stop, three stop. Final stop, 25% at each position. Like I keep saying, uptrend line, if you want to be really risk averse, a close below it, you'll get completely out. First profit target, 474. Next profit target, 740. I just want to get out of half because I've had really bad luck lately. Do you want to see the long position I passed on yesterday? NET. See this signal yesterday? Why do you think I passed on it? A stupid reason, but it's a reason nonetheless. Bop fell lower than these three sessions here. If BOP would have been like right here, I would have taken it long, but it fell. I didn't take it and it worked. So with all that out of the way, I do have one quality ad signal for Thursday session. Doesn't mean it will work. And I wanna show you something. 
Why I love my good to cancel buy stop limit methodology in a market like this is that it saves your ass if something doesn't work immediately. I have only had a few quality long signals over the past uh, three or four sessions. The first one, and we can go over them all now, Raven. This was the long signal here off support, engulfing candle over candle, heavier above average volume, pocket pivot point signal increasing green bop. The trigger is 31.23 up and through the price level. It never happened. We never took the trade. Then the one I gave publicly, MANT, the trigger was 88.56. It never triggered up and through 88.56. Kept us out of MANT. Hasn't triggered yet. Hasn't failed either. Still holding up. But once again, we prevented a 6 to 7% loss in this name simply by using that methodology. As with Raven, we prevented a 5% loss using that methodology. Following th those signals, I then had a signal in SSTI on Monday. Trigger was 37.94, and as you can see, never triggered. Has not failed yet. The uh, good to cancel buy stop limited order is still live on the books on my end. Stock still looks good, but once again, if it does fail, it's a non-event. No harm, no foul. And yesterday, the only quality long signal was CPSI, beautiful engulfing hammer candle. Reversal, it's hard to see the open price bar, but you can see it closed higher than where it opened. If it would have closed lower than where it opened, it would not have been a long signal. But it closed higher, was up on the day, above average, heavier volume, max green bop, the trigger, 29.89. Didn't happen today. Stock is still good. Stock is still on my ledger at Interactive Brokers Trader Workstation. I'm not getting rid of it yet. But once again, we saved ourselves a 3% loss by using this good to cancel buy stop limit rule. So our one signal of quality leading into Thursday session is MBUU. MBUU is extremely high quality can slim, but I don't know why it's not in my can slim scan. And actually, I don't, I got to go here. I want to see if it's even in this. I don't know why it's not an IBD stocks on the move list today. To me, that's really weird because it's super high quality. So I don't know why it's not on that page. But I got it in my tertiary scan. Or knew I'm already long it. Looked it up. And I remember I thought it was can slim quality. But when I looked it up, man, is it ever can slim quality? I mean, it's super high quality can slim quality. Has a 97 composite rating, 94 EPS rating, 93 relative strength rating, A minus, a and A plus letter grades. It's number one in its industry group. So we're dealing with a super high quality stock. Also, earnings are out of the way. It was technically an earnings winner this date. It's pulled back with the market. But what we have here is a candle over candle price bar on strong recent price support right around this level here. Old resistance becomes new support on heavier above average volume with a nice increase in green bop. Really clear risk levels here. I'm looking at a minimum potential previous measure move of 27%. And if you just use the first risk level, you're risking about 4%. Do the math, we're looking at a greater than six to one potential reward to risk ratio. Now the game plan with MBUU, up and through 46.98, triggering my good to cancel by stop at 46.99 which I will also have as my limit order you can add 47 cents up to 1% of the stop order and that can be your limit order but in this freaking tape perfect price or no price so I either get it at 46.99 up and through 46.98 not gap up and pull back to 46.99 if that happens I do not call it back on until the bid, ask, and price are all back below $46.99. If it triggers, your one and only really cut loss level that I want everyone to use is right here at $44.86. You can draw an uptrend line here if that helps you, give you a guideline as to where you need to cut your loss. Me, that's going to be my first 50% stop. And I always initially, if it would happen to trigger and fill, Give it room to work, and it'll be these lows here at 43.21. And once again, if it triggers tomorrow, let's say it opens at 46.70, and the low a day is 46.69 and then triggers, I'll have a third at 46.69, a third here 
and the final third right here. All right, guys, we're at the 15-minute mark, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video lesson up. Aloha.